you can apply bringing up a child in the way it should go and he will not depart from it, you can apply that to the children of God. If they are brought into the world in rebirth with things that have no true value to God, with traditions and uh, and just everything that leads them away from God, religions, you know, I mean, one of the requirements of uh, belonging to certain uh, Bible colleges to know church history, which is ridiculous because all of these things and doctrines of man separate you from the reality of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because before you can get to Christ, you have all of these other things that come before your eyes. And they use the word to perform it, to bring it into being, to prove to you this is what you need. But in reality, all you really need is Jesus Christ, who is the word. Do you realize that in the four gospels, when you take a good look at Jesus Christ, you will see and understand things you never saw before, especially if you ask the Lord to give you understanding and open up your eyes and bring you into the relationship that you truly need. Because if you do not have the center of all things, what do you have? It's not the way a child should go. A new reborn Christian First thing he needs is a relationship with God. If you bring him into anything else, then what, what, where you're taking him is, you know, it, it's like some of my videos. The Lord said that uh, the Lord came first and taught me all about love, how much he loved me. And then he introduced me to Jesus Christ, who was righteousness and love. Then he introduced me. But you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you have no fear of God, you it won't come bef before your eyes. Like I had taught before, if, say, this is sin, okay, and you look at it, and, and you're tempted to touch it. You're tempted to entertain it. And so as you're looking at it, if you have no fear of God, you'll touch it and, and play with it and maybe even take it in. But if you have the fear of God, you look at it and say, oh, you, you know, I, I don't want to touch that because, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be spanked. But God wants you to a place where perfect love casts out all fear. And so when you look at it and you say, oh, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to hurt the Lord. Big difference. Big difference. He tells me that he doesn't like it when I touch that. So therefore, ooh, I don't want to touch that, Lord. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to displease you. I don't want to. Uh, there's, this is an example of what you should do. So when you say, uh, perfect love casts out all fear, understand that when you obey your parents, if you won't listen, you know, this little tap becomes this little tap. And because you won't listen. And you don't want to go through that. Well, with God, it's the same way. God will touch you and say, mm, don't go that way. And you insist, hey, this can't be God. I'm going to do what I want to do in spite of what God's word says. And so you just plow on. Well, the spanking gets a little bit more because the Lord says that he will chastise all those he loves. So he will spank you. In that book, it says, and uh, it, it's amazing to me, but he says that, wow, how did that just leave my mind? 
Okay, I know if someone told me that whenever I have that pause, God is speaking to them. And whenever something leaves my mind, God is speaking to them. And I'm hoping that person is watching now. I'm hoping that person is listening to God now. Because uh, I've already written to them and told them, hey, God has something here. God's saying something. And, uh, and I'd like to know what it is. I could say, oh, you took this from, no, God took the thought from me. It wasn't you, it was God. And I know it was God. He took that thought from me. If he wants it to come back, he will bring it back. Perhaps whoever is listening cannot grasp it the way I'm telling it, so he will bring it back. So if you bring up a child in the way it should go, when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is what this video has been about. It has been about the fact that we are not correctors of the world. And even though the king of righteousness expects us to right, do rightly with his own children, he is not as hard or as tough on them as he is with the rebellious. Those that rebel against God, who are determined to have their own way, who are determined to believe that God called them to be a corrupter of the world, and they won't let God correct them. I mean, that's... That's unbelievable. They refuse to allow God to correct them. And so the Lord had said one time, my people know how to pray for prosperity, how to pray for a new home, how to do all of that. But when I come to convict them, to lead them into all truth, to show them the way, they say, get away from me, you devil. Because they had been taught that if it does, if it isn't comforting, then it's not God. There's no greater comfort than for God to use his rod, as it is written in Psalm 23. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. So what did he do with the rod with his, his uh, sheep? He taps them. Don't go that way. He taps them. Don't go that way. So so thy rod and thy staff comfort me. So there is a rod of correction, where, which means there is a rod for a spanking. So it comforts you. I know the greatest comfort God ever gave me was to know his power and his glory that was so tremendous that put a fear uh, of reverence inside of me so deep. Uh, that was the greatest comfort. When he comes like that to me in great fear of terrorizing power of his presence that has nothing to do with flesh fear, I've experienced them all. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the fact that you are in the presence of God and he wants you to change. There's something he wants you to do. The Holy Spirit doesn't visit for anything. He doesn't waste his time. He comes for a reason. When he falls upon a church, he does not fall because the pastor is doing everything correctly or the parishioners are doing it. He falls because someone in there is his child and he wants to reach them. Someone in there needs a healing and he wants to touch them. Someone in there needs the truth and he wants to bring it out in spite of what people think that the word of God is saying. In spite of that, God will reach far beyond that to reach that one that is his. For he says he will leave the 90 and 9 and go search for that one. And there's many churches that the Holy Spirit will fall, fall down in and everybody will think, oh, he's for me. He came because I'm so good and God told me everything's fine. And then they go live like a demon out of hell. And he, what he came for is to touch you, to make you want more of him, to go into that place with him and pray until you find him. That's what he wants. And had I started another, I had started another video about the relationship that God created man for so that he could have a relationship with man, somebody who was like him that he could walk and talk with. And so 
that relationship was destroyed with the disobedience in the garden, but it was restored through Jesus Christ, that those of us who truly love God, who truly are walking according to his purpose, we could hear his voice. There are a million ways to hear one verse in that Bible, which is the word of God. Not to the letter, but you could be obeying it in every part of your life. For the word of God is so powerful and it's so, it, it can, there's no limit to it. He knows, like Paul the Apostle said, he knows the height, he knows the depth, he knows the width. He knows everything. So he knows he made millions of people. And in those millions, there are different lives. Oh, you might have similar things, but they're different. Look at your fingerprints. You're a different person than the one next to you or has ever been created. Look at your fingerprints. God is the only one that can take a person and make them feel so special. Because they are. They are very special in the sight of God. He created them different than anybody else, so therefore, they're special. But nobody teaches you that. Nobody tells you that. What they do is they tell you, you have to go this way. This this formula, if you go this way, turn left, turn right, turn this. This is the way to God. <laughs> God is an open door. And you have a direct access to him unless you listen to this one, this wind, that wind. You have direct ac access to Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, because you heard this, this comes. You heard that, that comes. You were told this, that comes. You were led to this, that comes. And so therefore, there you are seeking God and you can't find him. You see this is... You see what so-and-so said. You see what so-and-so taught. You see what so-and-so did. You see what so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. You see how they took the word and said this. You see how they took the word and said that. You see how they had knowledge and this knowledge is the way to go. And this knowledge is, no, it's not. No, it's not. The way to go is to go directly to Jesus Christ. Like I said before, that if you go to someone else to get Jesus Christ, what difference is there between you going to Mary or you going to dead saints or you going to, what difference is there? Have you gotten on your knees to seek him out only? No one else. No one else. <clears throat> and when you find and receive the truth, as soon as you're reborn, Wow, that's a different individual altogether. Because what happens with that different in individual is they go directly to God. Now you have something. They don't have to fight this doctrine. They don't have to just uh, give up this person. They don't have, they don't go through none of that. What do they go through? Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, they can see him. They can hear him. I know some will say I was I was reborn in March. I was reborn two years ago. The Lord came into my life and changed me. And those new reborn people, whenever they hear the truth, and after studying and re, and trying to find God, God, they're looking for God. They're not looking for what man says. After trying to find God, they hear a voice and they go, ah. Oh, I know that's God. That's the Holy One. That's the one that God has been telling me to search for. Oh, I am sitting here just enjoying God. I love the truth. You may have heard one of my videos where I said there was a man that I just respected and he just brought out the word of God. I was sitting under his ministry until I moved. <laughs> and he would go, he would open up the Bible 
And just before he would speak to the people, he didn't even know he did it. <laughs> just before he speak to the people, a revelation of truth would come to him and he'd go, wow. And then he would walk down through the, through the aisle and begin to preach. Then he'd be talking and he'd be jumping in and he'd go back because he always jumped. He was, he was thin. He liked to keep in shape. And so he'd go back up and he'd go to the pulpit and he'd open the, the Bible where he was or he'd look, he'd look again and he'd look at it and he'd go, wow. <laughs> oh, that was the most marvelous thing to watch because the revelation of truth and then he'd come out and expound it. <laughs> oh, wow. He was a man that would not uh, allow anybody to mess around and play around with the things of God in his church. He just, he knew the truth and it was amazing. If I ever get back there again, I'm going directly to that church because I want to see him. I want to see, I know he's still preaching the truth and I know he will never let it go because I know what God revealed to him. It is awesome. It's an awesome thing to really watch God. It's just, it was marvelous. How many people do you know do that? Very few. Well, I only know one, and I know thousands of people. <laughs> and I've been in the presence of so many uh, pastors and preachers and teachers. And here was a marvelous, marvelous man of God. And I am sure the Lord got great joy in his his ability to bring forth the word. All I have to say is, wow. The amazing thing is when the Lord had me walk through the ministry for the first time, the scripture that he preached on was exactly and almost word for word the way the Lord would have me preach it. And I knew when I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm marveling of how wonderful it was. I was very blessed for years to be able to stay there. And when I got here in Florida, oh, it was so different. It In this area, the deception is unbelievable. There was an area up in Pennsylvania where the deception and the cult teaching was so unbelievable. And when you have people that will say, our church is the only true church. And if you leave this church, you're, you're not of God. I don't care if they excommunicate you. I don't care what they do. It's a cult. Because no man can separate you from Jesus Christ. No man can tell you you're going to hell. No man can say to you, you are wrong. No man. <laughs> no man. You know why? Because they're not your judge. The Bible says if you judge yourself, which means go before Jesus Christ and say, Lord, see if there be any iniquity in me. Lead me. Lead me to repentance. Take Psalm 51 and allow God to create within you a new heart, one that will never fall. Jesus Christ does that. He does that with everybody. Whether you go to church or don't go to church, whether you, he does that. It's a reality. This is what he does in the word. Unfortunately for many people, they are like the Israelites were when they went to the prophet and said, we want a king over us. And the, uh, the prophet said, hey, you've got God. And he said, no, we want a king over us. I'm smiling because somebody's going to take that and twist, <laughs> twist what I'm saying according, not realizing that there's many interpretations of the Bible and they take this one to the letter and you don't say it correctly, but I am saying it correctly because I don't have to say it word for word because God doesn't require that of me. So they said, he said, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. This is what a king does. And they said, we don't care. We want a king over us. We want to be like every other nation. We want a king. 
God gave him a king. And you know what happened with those kings. Go read it in the word of God. God told me when the Lord had guided me and led me for years, no one else, just him and me, Jesus and me, I always say. I said, I, I got to get approval by, from other preachers. And, and God said, no, you don't. I raised you. I brought you into all truth. That is not for you. For they will lead you here, here, and here. Don't go there. Well, I went anyway. And I, I had my heart broken. Four years later, I was licking my wounds. Because... They were not what they appeared to be or seemed to be. And as a matter of fact, I wound up teaching the college teacher. teacher. And uh, God was doing many mighty miracles with me. And uh, the truth of the matter was, is there, I made so many mistakes because I had still lacked so much understanding and that's why God didn't want me to go. I wasn't ready. If we go out before God, we're not ready. And therefore, we can get into a lot of trouble. And so, I went up making a lot of mistakes. And they come back and they all come back on me. But I licked my wounds anyway, and the Lord said to me, you're not the first prophet they tried to kill. He said, they killed many a prophet in this church. Leave it. And they said, but I fixed it so they can't kill you. Because the way I taught you and all that I gave you, you're going to go on no matter what they do, no matter what they say. There's other people that don't know how to do that. They're crushed. They they fall down. They they never get back up again because they're so crushed with what so and so said, what so and so taught, what so and so did. Thank you, Jesus. And and this crushes them. The rejection just crushes them. And God, you can't crush. You can't you can't take him and go like this with him and go like that with him and make him fall down and make him cry and make you, you know. <laughs> You can't do it. You can't deliver God up to Satan. You can't make God putty in your hands and manipulation of the word. and You can't do it. It won't work. They're still, if they belong to God, going to come up with joy. They're going to come up with peace. They're going to come up with the truth. They're going to come up with doing what God called them to do, no matter what you say. And it, it doesn't matter if you take a hundred thousand people to follow you in your deception. I say in the name of Jesus Christ, go for it. Because I don't want you troubling me anyway. And this is where the church has really messed up. Because if somebody comes along and takes there are people that give money, the people that do this. If somebody comes along and that diminishes, they'll change their tune. They won't preach the truth anymore because they're afraid I'll lose this one, I'll lose that one. You think I'm afraid of somebody that listens to the truth and then turns from a wind of doctrine? I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. I lost them to begin with because they didn't want it. I don't. I don't think that way. You think I'm going to grab a hold of them and say, "Come, I have had too many. God has given me too many people that came and stayed with me for a while and then left because he disagreed, which was fine. I let him go. God says, in peace, let people go in peace. And I did. But they always, always come back. Because they always said, no one has the truth. Wherever I went, I could not find what God was giving me through you. And they become better Christians for the experience, for finding out 
And it's not, it's not that I'm the only one who has the truth. I know that. They know that. But I'm saying in this area, in, in the way God led in their life, that's what I'm talking about. There was nobody else in their life. Get that straight because they're going to twist up everything I say. So we'll make it clear and straight. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, well, I'm not sorry, but I, I, I bust out laughing. When those thoughts come to my brain, I laugh because you can't touch God. You can't change his mind. You can't stop him. You can't, you can pray till doomsday and it won't change a thing. You can't, you can't make me fall down and, and hurt and get sick. And <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. The Lord showed me. He gave me victory over it all because he knew where I was going and he knew what they were going to do to me. He knew what they were going to do is they were going to try and trap with the words. And that's fine. Because everybody got to do what they believe they got to do until they find the truth. So in me, I forgive. And when I say I forgive, I forget the damage of it. It don't hurt me. Why should I be upset? It doesn't hurt me. Why should I? But for them... It is for them, I pray. It is for them that I, if I cry, I cry for them. Because, boy, the joy of knowing God is lacking there. The joy of understanding God is not there. And so, if you think I'm defending myself, I'm not responsible for what you think. I don't have to pay for what you think. If you say, well, she's doing this and only said that because of that, that's a judgment according to the word that you're not entitled to. And because you're not entitled to a judgment will fall on you. And everybody's going to look at you and they're going to say, he's only doing this or she's only doing that because of this and because of that. And that's going to pile on top of you. Eventually, it's going to just keep on piling on top of you because you did not obey the word that said, judge not lest ye be judged. You can't see in the center of any man's heart or any man's mind. If God comes to me as a prophet and said, this is the way it is, that's different. I can speak it. But if you speak it, he's going to count it as though, hey, you're not being a prophet. He's going to count it against you because you are overstepping your authority. And you are taking upon you what doesn't belong to you. There's a difference. A big difference. So. I'm not going to waste my time on any more of this. I'm going to go on to where God sent me. And there are people out there. That need help. And I'm going to go into my next video and tell some more about some of these people.